。好，各位同事，咁就、啊、我哋。Members were formed the quorum and it's also the appointed time. First of all, may I wish you good health and every success in the new year. Please invite the um, secretary and his team to join us now. Present for this special meeting, we have... Oh, they're not yet here. Let us welcome Dr. Ko Wingman, Secretary for Food and Health, Mrs. Mariam Lai, Permanent Secretary for Food and Health, and Mr. Clement Leung, Director of Food and Environmental Hygiene, Dr. Li Xiu Yuan, Assistant Director. Uh, from the Center for Food Safety, and uh, Dr. Ho Yok Yin, consultant from the uh, Center for Food Safety as well. Thank you very much for attending this special meeting. Let's hope that uh, food uh, is safer in Hong Kong, and uh, we have a better environmental hygiene, and may I wish uh, the Secretary a uh, very successful year. So, Secretary, would you like to walk us through the paper you've prepared for the panel? Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, members. Details, of course, can be found in the paper. I suggest that I uh, highlight the salient points, and then I will give the floor to uh, the uh, director of food and environmental hygiene to uh, fill in the details. As we all know, in mid-December last year, it was reported in the newspaper that a suspected unlicensed food processing establishment had been supplying cooking oil of substandard quality to 13 restaurants. And according to a report, the content, uh, there, there was a, a carcinogen uh, in the cooking oil concerned uh, because uh, the um, proper name uh, is rather um, unfamiliar, so uh, we will use the short term uh, BAP to uh, denote the uh, substance. So we uh, took immediate action after the report in the past few weeks. The, direct, the department has done a lot, uh, and um, details uh, will be uh, reviewed to members later. So uh, through the food tracing mechanism, and uh, by approaching uh, the uh, um, A QSIG administration of quality uh, supervision, inspection, and quality, we tried to uh, trace uh, the uh, source of the problematic oil, and then uh, we also monitor the uh, recalling. Uh, process. According to investigation and information, there is no evidence to show that the cooking oil uh, was from uh, the gutter. Uh, so uh, they, it is not really gutter oil. And at, at the 27th of December last year, the Center for Food Safety has taken 90 samples. And then uh, the uh, findings were announced in two batches so far as that the uh, 27th of December, we had uh, tested for BAP on 19 samples, and the samples have come from uh, uh, food traders suspected of uh, uh, having been involved in that uh, problematic uh, oil and also, uh, uh, also chain retail chains in the market. So uh, with the exception of um, that particular oil sample, uh, the other samples were not found to have exceeded the uh, standard set uh, by uh, mainland China. And then um, no, no other uh, problematic uh, samples were found. In the light of, the, of public concern, the uh, CFS 
were on top of the current uh, food surveillance program and uh, food tracing mechanism take additional measures to ensure uh, safe food safety and to allay public concern. There will be uh, other routine inspection uh, mechanism and, uh, of um, premises for bottling or cooking or canning cooking oil. And subject to the inspection results, will we seriously consider the need to withdraw the licensing exemption for uh, such premises? I'm talking about food premises uh, that are involved in the bottling or canning of cooking oil. Uh, they are exempted from our licensing regime currently and will consider whether that exemption uh, arrangement uh, should be revoked. And then we're going to a carol thematic uh, surveillance program of uh, food, uh, of uh, cooking oil. We will uh, review the uh, frequency and number of samples to be taken and also the types of laboratory analysis to be conducted. PAB will be will be included in our routine our testing and will also have a profession, provisional action level. We well, intend to convene a meeting of the Expert Committee on Food Safety in January and uh, consult the members on our uh, suggestions uh, for confirmation. I will now give the floor to the Director to give a more detailed uh, report to members. Director, thank you. Uh, on the 13th of December, uh, the uh, incident was reported uh, by the media, and then uh, without a delay, we we took immediate action. And then, as soon as the now the report was um, uh, released uh, on the 13th of December last year, we took immediate action. So, uh, an oil supplier in Kwai Chong or food. Uh, processing establishment in Kwai Chung was reported, and then the 13 restaurants are uh, alleged to uh, be uh, purchasing oil from this establishment were also inspected. Uh, the operator uh, in Kwai Chung refused to, to uh, let us gain uh, access, and so on the same day we applied for a warrant from the court, and in the same afternoon uh, we gained access into the establishment for investigation and sample taking and uh, sample taking. After the investigation, testing and tracing by CFS, uh, we found out that uh, the uh, source uh, involved a brand name called uh, Gam Dai Long Hang. Well, uh, that badge uh, involving the th three samples we've taken uh, later are found to uh, contain to be containing uh, BAPs of 14, 16, 17 uh, micrograms per kilogram, um, respectively, exceeding the national standard. And CSF has taken uh, several follow-up measures. First, uh, we conducted a risk assessment. Although uh, the risk assessment. Uh, shows that a level of 14, 16, 17 microgram uh, per kilogram will not pose serious health concern. But uh, to play safe, the CFS immediately asked the supplier to uh, suspend the uh, supply of this product and a uh, total recall from uh, its uh, retailers. And then on the 15, 18th and the 27th of December, press releases were made to announce our preliminary uh, laboratory findings and also our risk assessment uh, conclusion. And we also explain to the public uh, the state of, uh, of recall of uh, this product from the market. In addition to testing for BAP, we also uh, tested for other possible um, harmful substances in these samples, including uh, metallic contaminants and uh, mycotoxins as required by our legislation. So it is found that there have been uh, no exceedance. And then 
uh, using our uh, food safety uh, ordinance, we've also uh, checked the uh, supplier of these products. We've checked the uh, invoices, uh, transaction records, and we also approached our counterparts in the AQSIQ and it's confirmed that uh, the oil has come from uh, quite a sizable um, uh, enterprise from Qingdao. It's called Chang, uh, Changsheng uh, uh, Group, and then it it was. It's been employed in Hong Kong through the New World Group Enterprise Group, and it is found that perhaps there was a substandard quality control during processing, leading to an exceedance in the level of BAP. And using our food tracing mechanism. We tried uh, to uh, find out uh, the different uh, uh, retailers that have been supplied with the product. We've been to uh, different uh, uh, um, uh, uh, establishment to take samples for uh, testing. After that operation, we no longer uh, uh, identify any uh, stock of that same batch of oil in the establishment. We've also taken uh, action to allay uh, public concern. We've got uh, six measures to follow up. First, on the 18th of December, we met with uh, representatives from the trade to explain to them uh, the details of uh, this incident and also the findings of our risk assessment. We reminded the trade once again uh, to uh, source uh, food ingredients from reliable sources and also to ascertain uh, the quality and uh, sources of uh, uh, of uh, the stock, and then they should be properly registered and keep proper records uh, to uh, ensure that we can easily trace and uh, also recall problematic food. We will continue to communicate with the trade. We will enhance uh, publicity and education of uh, the industry. And the second measure CFS has taken to allay public concern is to carry out a thematic uh, food uh, surveillance, surveillance program. Uh, we will uh, consider uh, suppliers, uh, importers, distributors, retailers, and also uh, restaurants. We will take samples uh, from these places to test for uh, harmful substances, including BAP. We will complete the thematic survey as soon as possible. Uh, we actually uh, carried out a similar thematic survey earlier on, and uh, the results were in general satisfactory. We're going to do that again to uh, further uh, ensure the public, and the results will be announced within a couple of months. And as regards the oil supply in Kwai Chong, uh, you uh, might have read uh, from uh, news reports that the places were uh, rather unhygienic. So we have issued a warning notice to require the uh, operator to improve the um, hygiene of the premises, and we'll be investigate whether uh, there was someone uh, carrying out food processing business without a license. If it is found that uh, uh, legal provisions are breached, uh, we will uh, prosecute accordingly. The fourth measure is uh, under our enforcement strategy of uh, food safety regulations, uh, we have um, invested uh, easy warning letters to nine food importers or distributors, requesting them to register as food importers or distributors within 14 days. And uh, there's also another warning letter issued to a registered food distributor. And we understand uh, that um, uh, six ha have already uh, applied for registration. We also uh, in uh, will also inspect companies that engaged uh, in oil distribution business. Uh, we will have a routine um, inspection program to ensure the hygiene conditions of these premises. And based on our inspection uh, result, we will uh, consider uh, whether there is the need to withdraw the licensing exemption for bottling or canning cooking oil. Lastly. Also review our food surveillance program. 
we will review our inspection frequency and also uh, the uh, types of uh, laboratory an analysis to be conducted and the number of samples to be taken. And BAP will be included in our routine testing. And then the provisional action level of BAPs will be set at 10 uh, microgram per kilogram. And then we'll also uh, consult our expert committee on food safety within this month. I, I want to stress this by the past few weeks with our uh, investigation efforts, we have not found any we have not found any evidence to prove that the um, incident involved any gutter oil. Basing on existing law, basing on our enforcement action, basing on our routine and thematic um, food surveillance program, we will be able to enhance the uh, safety of food oil, cooking oil and protect public safety. We will continue to adopt a risk-based uh, risk approach to work with the food trade. So um, this is in your, your introduction. Right. Now the floor is open to members. This is a special meeting, and it is a single agenda item. And I've noticed uh, that um, according to the number of Members who have signed up, uh, I will uh, suggest uh, seven minutes for the first round and then three minutes for the second round. I'll uh, read out the names Wong Kok Heng, uh, Joseph Lee, Vice Chairman Vincent Fang, Tommy Chung, uh, Christopher Chung. Those who've raised their hands. Ms. Wong Kok Heng. Now, last October, Mr. Chairman, at the meet at a meeting of this panel, I raised the issue. Uh, of um, my concern towards the gutter oil. The administration said there was no problem, and now there is indeed a problem. The administration is only taking action after the incident. I think the administration should learn, learn the lesson. It shouldn't just be so reactive. In fact, it has failed us. The administration has failed us. Now, the administration said that it uh, had introduced a number of measures since December last year, and people could rest assured, could, uh, could be rest assured. But I don't think that addresses uh, the concerns towards the safety of cooking oil. Concerning BAP, uh, the administration uh, standardizes as BAP because the Chinese name is also a mouthful. And it's also easier for members of the public and the media to uh, follow. Now, concerning BAP, I have three questions. First, it is reported that the administration requires the importers, the distributors, uh, to recall those um, products. But the such products are allowed to be shipped back to the mainland. And if you allow them to ship the products back to the mainland, and then they'll mix the oils again, and then they can be repackaged and then imported to Hong Kong again. Is it really responsible? Is this, is this what a responsible government should do? Why can't the um, oil, problematic oil, be disposed of? instead of allowing it to be um, sent back to the mainland. Concerning importing cooking oil into Hong Kong, and then um, these uh, factories mix different kinds of cooking oil, why can't the administration conduct prosecution against them? Why are they still allowed to continue the operation? The administration is just saying that it will consult an expert committee and let the expert committee to consider whether such an exem exemption will be withdrawn. Why can't the administration just take action and withdraw the exemption? Do it. Why can't the administration do it in a clear-cut manner and send a clear message to the to the public and that the administration is committed to defend um, public health and safety? 
the, my third question is this. With regard to uh, surveillance on BAP, why can't that be included into the law? Say, for example, if BAP is above a certain level, prosecution can be taken out immediately. Why? It's still just put within the surveillance network and nothing else, or nothing more. Does it mean that if they don't breach the law, then the administration can't do anything about it? Um, the Secretary. I'll answer the questions first, and then if need be, the Director and also the colleagues from the CFS can supplement. The first question is why we allow them to ship the oil back to the mainland. It's not that we just let them um, ship the oil back to the mainland. We inform the AQSIQ and we'll make sure, uh, we've made sure that uh, the oil will be properly dealt with after it is shipped back. As for the processing of cooking oil, there are two concepts here. If um, one wants to mix cooking oil, one has to register. Uh, th that is a processing uh, procedure. And for those who are exempted, um, they are doing um, the uh, retailing, say for example, by um, transferring uh, oil from a big barrel into smaller containers, and there is no mixing. Therefore, such operators are a given exemption. But we are considering uh, stepping up our um, control on this kind of repackaging, and we will step up our inspection on such premises, and we may consider withdrawing the exemption if need be. But you have to understand the background of the matter. In the past, um, uh, there was the sale uh, of oil at about uh, at the at the retail level. Um, the selling of cooking oil in small, very small quantities. <coughs> and through our inspection uh, if we've noticed that there is a change in situation, we may change our arrangement. I think the director can provide further supplements. The director, concerning shipping the oil back to the mainland, concerning these prob uh, the problematic oil, there are two ways to deal with them. One is that they hand over the oil to us and we dispose, them of, dispose of them. Usually um, it is um, in relation to smaller quantities. But if it is of a huge quantity or a bigger quantity, then among food safety uh, institute authorities, um, a normal practice is to send the problematic uh, product back to the place of origin. We inform, we inform the uh, food safety authority of the place before we allow the shipment uh, to be made. We don't allow them to just send the oil back and then uh, do the mixing again. In fact, the AQSIQ is very concerned about the matter and has ordered company to make improvement to find out the reason for that and to find out the reason for the exceedance. So we don't deal with it lightly. As for registration, the Secretary has already spoken on that. As for mixing of cooking oil, in fact, uh, the operator has to get a license, otherwise uh, he or she is operating that without a license. As for bottling and canning, um, it's being done lawfully, even without a license, and if we are going to turn it into um, a um, mandatory requirement to get a license, we have to follow a due process as required by this Council. Now, people. Uh, can uh, do bottling and canning of oil without a license. And if we withdraw the exemption, uh, we have to gone through we have to go through due process and we have to listen to the um, the views of the operators as well. And we have to consider them. As for BAP, Dr. Ho can speak on that. Please be quick because um seven is more than seven minutes already. Doctor Ho. 
Uh, please switch on the microphone for Dr. Ho. Uh, please try, Dr. Ho. It seems that his mic is not on. 最近门口嗰个位未有麦，老师啊，啊，多谢后 ，please try。OK， 你帮你诶 ，explain it a little bit further as with regard to BAP， which is a chemical， it is a contaminant in the environment、uh,。Many kinds of food、uh, have such a contaminant in the natural state。In 2009， the international A cancer organization regarded this、uh, as a carcinogen, human carcinogen. It also has genetic toxins. It is a kind of genetic toxin. It will um, um, attack our um, uh, genes as well.、Um, no matter how high the、um, how high or how low the level is,、uh, the the consumption level is,、um, it is still toxic, and therefore、um, it is a、um, We we should adopt the ALAP as low as、uh, reasonably possible、uh, principle, and we have the method of MOE margin of exposure to assess the risk. In fact, the international experts are of the view that if the MOE is less than ten thousand, then there is a risk. And by adopting this approach, we assess the cooking oil we've tested. Uh, for BAP, and the calculation is that if the uh, amount uh, is more than 20 micrograms per kg, then the risk、uh, will be higher. And according to the law,、um, according to Cap 132, Section 54, we can order for the recalling of the、um, product on a mandatory basis. Uh, but if、um, the level is more than 10 bpp,、um, there is a risk, but the risk is not too high. Under such circumstances, we can still take、uh, legal action, take enforcement action. Our proposal is that we、um, have a provisional, provisional action level which is 10 bpp,、uh, And、uh, depending on the result of the survey, we will report to the expert committee and consult the views of the expert committee on the level we've set.、Uh, Dr. Joseph Lee,、uh, Mr. Wong, you may queue up again.、Uh, Dr. Joseph Lee, well, how、uh, many I mean, queue? Mr. Wong Kok Heng has to wait again because not all his questions has been answered. I think. The issue、um, is concerning.、Uh, is an isolated case, you may say that, but there is the、um, neglect towards、um, cooking oil safety. In routine testing, sixty-five thousand、uh, samples、uh, or sixty-five thousand per year. And you did 310, and you said it was safe. And as far as cooking oil is concerned, now what kind of contents have been tested? I didn't watch the TV、uh, yesterday,、uh, but does it mean、uh, that you rub、um, uh, peanut oil in your hands, and you 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 rub、uh, the oil in your hand, and you smell、uh, peanut, or if you or it or it smell peanut, or it smell soy? Soybean, then that is safe, or you put it in your refrigerator and it returns、uh, thick, then、uh, that is a problem. So you really need to conduct routine checks in, on, on a more regular basis, and there is also a problem of law enforcement. Under the food、uh, safety ordinance, now you discover the source.、Uh, you found. Uh, that they even if you found that they have keep、uh, they have kept proper records, the records do not require whether the oil is、uh, kept in good conditions or the oil、uh, is of a certain content. And there are still nine who have not been registered and who have been warned. Do you know how many 
operators who are mixing cooking oil? How many distributors? How many retailers? How many importers? If you don't know, how can you make sure that you can have a full inspection of them? You say you will consider withdrawing the license, but you don't know how many of them are doing the business. So how can you um, decide on withdrawing the exemption? And there's a loophole in the law. Say if I am making lot, I'm uh, if I am um, squeezing, uh, if I am um, trying to produce peanut oil or um, bean oil in uh, vegetable oil in Hong Kong, then I have to get a license. But if I just import oil and then mix them, I don't get, a, I don't need a license. So there's a loophole in your routine checks. Uh, routine testing, so you need to specify what you need to check, what you don't need to check, uh, check uh, what you don't need to test, and why and why not. And um, are 65,000 tests adequate? Are 65,000 samples adequate? And if you don't have enough resources, you can give your justification and we give you the money. Is 65,000 enough? I don't know. You have to explain how you come up with the number, 65,000. Say in other countries, in other places, how much samples do they take? How much tests do they make? In terms of law enforcement, it's obvious that there are many loopholes in the law. You don't know who is mixing oil, and they don't need to register. So in terms of law enforcement, shouldn't you step up your efforts? And don't you have the responsibility to deal with it administratively and order oil the, uh, order these oil mixing operators uh, to keep suitable testing records. And then if you think the records are not adequate, then you can uh, take samples to test, and then test the oil. And you also have the responsibility to change the law. You don't need to consider. You don't need to even uh, consult. Vincent Fang may say it will increase costs, but you need to balance that. So the government is responsible. Now, if the law cannot regulate these uh, oil mixes, then you have to change the law. And the Lechko is willing to cooperate, I think, if you want to change the law. In the interim, the administration should at least use administrative measures to ensure that oil, uh, edible oil in Hong Kong is safe for consumption. And we don't need to worry that uh, there is gutter oil uh, in the market or there is BAP in our uh, cooking oil. So. Uh, uh, Dr. Lee has uh, pointed out that uh, your food surveillance program lacks transparency, and he also uh, referred to a number of details. Secretary, I'll give a general response first before the, sec uh, the director supplements. Well, the CFS has all along uh, monitored the quality of uh, edible oil in Hong Kong. Our chairman, you talked about transparency. In fact, we are of the view that we have done our utmost to enhance uh, the uh, transparency because we always announce the findings of uh, sampling. It's just that from to time to time, uh, uh, well, from time to time, uh, there will uh, be uh, media reports of uh, findings of our uh, thematic uh, tests. So, in general, uh, f uh, cooking oil is safe, but it's just an isolated incident. Uh, since uh, January 2011 to October 2012, we uh, have taken uh, more than 310 cooking oil samples tested for different uh, chemicals, including a number of um, items, uh, including uh, uristic acid coloring matter, uh, mycotoxins, antioxidants, and metallic uh, contaminants, etc. Uh, this time, we are going to include BAP as one of our regular uh, tested items. And then in 2011, in 2012, we also announced uh, the uh, findings of a uh, targeted surveillance project on used cooking oil because from time to time uh, there were concerns about um, repeated uh, reuse of cooking oil. So uh, we checked 68 samples of used cooking oil. Uh, and uh, we tested them for BAP and other chemicals. 
the uh, CFS will uh, conduct another similar targeted surveillance project very soon. So uh, we do have we do have regular monitoring of uh, the safety of food items, but uh, in the light of uh, this incident, we will improve our present mechanism. And as for the um, for amendment, legislative amendment, we have to respect uh, procedural justice. Uh, bottling or canning of uh, oil alone is not a high-risk industry, and this mode of uh, retail has um, been in Hong Kong for a long time. If we want to uh, change uh, the uh, mode of operation, uh, we have to assess the uh, impact on the community. If we take it to the extreme, there might be major impact on some retailers. So we cannot uh, just uh, enact legislation to control everything as soon as uh, there is an incident. We have to take care of uh, the risks involved before making a decision. Director, uh, for your information, Chairman, the administration attaches a lot of significance to uh, food safety. We take over 65,000 tampons per year, but uh, for advanced economies, they usually take examples uh, per 1,000 population. In Hong Kong, our standard is 9 out of 1,000 population. So our standards are already higher than uh, the general um, advanced economies. But we understand that a food uh, Safety is a public concern, and we have undertaken to review the frequency of our uh, of our testing, the number of samples to be taken, and also uh, the uh, types of uh, laboratory analysis. Now uh, we will be te we were testing uh, food, vegetable, uh, meat, uh, and uh, prepackaged foods. So we're very transparent. We announce the findings uh, regularly on a monthly basis. And other than those uh, regular um, projects, we also have targeted uh, surveillance projects and also seasonal testing, uh, such as um, uh, hairy crabs and uh, rice dumplings, so on and so forth. As we all know, on the 1st of February last year, uh, the uh, Food Safety Ordinance came into effect. So under the ordinance, all registered companies uh, that import and distribute a food in Hong Kong have registered. We have uh, uh, more than 10,000, and uh, for some uh, retailers, they do not have uh, to be registered. There are over 20,000. We also have uh, their uh, name list. And uh, for uh, traders and uh, that import, uh, distribute, and uh, sell oil at the retail level, we also have got number for the first with uh, about 800 distributors. Um, about a thousand, and for processing, uh, about four. While we can't say that we are very comprehensive, but we do have a number of companies in our database where we have uh, their information with us, because uh, it uh, will um, help us uh, to carry out our work. And I ask members to rest assured that uh, CFS. Uh, Fully, uh, is fully aware of uh, the situation. And uh, Dr. Lee would like to ask for supplementary information. Please uh, supply it to him after the meeting. I have to control uh, time better because, uh, uh, on average, uh, members are using uh, 10 minutes each. Uh, if that's the case, we can't have a uh, second round. Uh, Deputy Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. After the incident, uh, DAB uh, submitted a letter to this panel on the 14th of uh, December. We wanted to uh, have it included in our regular meeting on the 7th, and I thank the Chairman and the Secretary uh, for uh, convening a special meeting today. I have to thank the uh, Chairman for his, very, uh, for his efficiency. Uh,
this incident has aroused public concern, and we are also very concerned. We have uh, uh, many uh, submissions and letters, uh, the, the greatest number I've seen uh, since I became a legislator, so you can see uh, the public concern. I'd like to know uh, whether the administration can respond to the following points first. FHD's uh, uh, inspection and a monitoring of uh, importers, distributors, and uh, retailers of oil. Second, the food uh, tracing mechanism is not operating smoothly. Some uh, food retailers and distributors are not registered, and it took uh, the uh, director long, uh, the department a long time before they could trace uh, the source of uh, the oil. And uh, what uh, is the uh, department going to do for the remaining uh, company? And I'd like to know whether the um, director uh, has got um, the uh, limits uh, for various casinogens, including uh, BAPs. This time uh, we have uh, identified BAPs, but what about other casinogens? Would the administration uh, have uh, limits for them? And uh, there is licensing exemption for uh, bottling or canning of cooking oil. The administration uh, is going to consult the trade first before uh, removing the exemption. We agree that uh, there should be consultation, but there is already an incident. What is the administration's inclination. Is it going to uh, remove the exemption? Is there uh, uh, any uh, in-between approach between uh, total exemption and uh, revocation of exemption? And uh, for um, uh, some uh, for importation of food, there is no need uh, for a health certificate. So perhaps the uh, director, the department, is not doing a good job. And according to media reports, some oil companies uh, will recycle uh, uh, old uh, cooking uh, oil cans and and uh, use it uh, for bottling or canning of uh, cooking oil. And I don't know whether the cooking oil used is second hand or substandard. How uh, how does the administration ensure safety in uh, such operations? Six questions. Inspection. Uh, because of the incident, I think uh, uh, the public can see that uh, we uh, crack down on uh, such activities uh, very um, stringently. Can we inspect? Uh, can we uh, inspect all uh, thou all one thousand, two thousand establishment? Uh, is it really necessary? Is based on risk assessment. And you can see that the food tracing mechanism is effective. Otherwise, you won't be able uh, to uh, trace the problematic batch so quickly. We're able uh, to trace it all the way back to the manufacturer on the mainland. And as for packaging, although uh, some uh, distribu distributors are, are packaging the oil, or bottling the oil for sale. Uh, currently, they are not required to uh, be registered. Uh, should uh, we require them to be registered, we have to consider whether it is relevant to this matter. Well, for this incident, is because one batch of oil from imported is problematic. It has n perhaps nothing to do with the bottling business. Uh, is it really necessary to change or to control uh, this mode of uh, business, uh, traditional mode of business, because of a single incident? And I uh, rem remain open-minded on this, Director. Yes, uh, there was a complaint or a report, and then after the report, uh, we took samples from uh, that establishment to see whether the oil samples were up to our standard. So this is about food safety. Uh, does it involve uh, false description or false trademark? Our customs colleagues are investigating. 
So we have a routine and targeted uh, food surveillance projects, but we will also try to identify uh, irregular irregularities uh, uh, from various channels and take appropriate follow-up actions. My question has not been answered. What about substances other than BAP? Will uh, they be tested as well? The CFS has covered most of the main uh, possible harmful substances are recognized internationally and they've uh, in our uh, testing. Well, harmful substances uh, can uh, come in, uh, can, can uh, be very numerous and um, if uh, they the samples have not exceeded the uh, substances included in our legislation, then it is already uh, law abiding. But um, we have also other pieces of legislation to uh, tackle other scenarios. Uh, for instance, CAP 132, uh, Section 52 and 54. If, uh, if any person uh, provides food which is not of the nature or not of the substance or not of the quality of the food demanded by the purchaser, he is guilty of an offence. And any person who supplies food uh, f for sale must be fit for human uh, fit for human consumption. Otherwise, uh, he commits an offence. And of course, we also have to conduct a risk assessment if um, uh, it, it is up to an actionable level. Then uh, we will uh, take action. Mr. Vincent Fang. I think the CFS has uh, uh, played uh, its role, uh, has discharged its responsibility, although uh, there is room for improvement, but I think uh, the centre responded, responded quicker, uh, responded to uh, the incident quicker than before it was established. And for BAP, it is strange. Australia, the US, Japan, and Singapore do not have any limits on BAP, whereas uh, the EU and mainland China have uh, established stand limits uh, 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 to be uh, somewhere below 10 uh, BPP. So, have we checked with uh, the US, Australia, uh, Japan, and Singapore? Uh, what are the uh, levels of BAPs in their eating oil? And uh, do we have uh, any uh, clear uh, standards for for uh, BAP? Should it be below 10? Because according to Para 18, the supplier, the mainland supplier, had changed the pro processing procedures and the proportion of ingredients of the peanut oil without permission uh, upon the uh, Hong Kong importer's request. Now, if uh, it is indeed the case, uh, the a badge should not be allowed to enter Hong Kong. Is it true that uh, there was a change at the request of the Hong Kong importer, or was it uh, something, uh, or is it uh, was there a problem with the mainland manufacturer? And the CFS has also done a risk assessment. If uh, the risk is high, you check more often. If the risk is low, you check less often. Now, what sort of criterion do you have? Under what circumstances? How high will the risk be? Will you turn it into a routine check or regular check? So what is the uh, criterion for raising the um, frequency to regular checks with regard to 
the oil. The oil, the oil doesn't exceed the um, limit very much. The problem seems to be with the poor hygienic condition of the processing factory. Will you step up the inspection of the processing factories? I saw through the TV that um, the hygiene condition of the factory is uh, was very poor. The administration shouldn't just take action after the incident. The administration should step up inspection. And how frequent will you step up the inspection? Food safety is not just limited to edible oil. There's a problem of um, fish ponds, mariculture zones. Um, the administration um, hopes that the food produced in licensed uh, suppliers, produced by licensed suppliers, who can, uh, will be shipped to Hong Kong. I, I noticed that many um, supermarkets and even small operators in Hong Kong buy uh, food directly and import them in import them from the mainland. How can you make sure <coughs> that um, these importers will uh, buy food uh, items from the uh, legislative of uh, licensed producers in the mainland? Now there are two issues. Now concerning the uh, importer asked uh, for increasing BAP, I, I don't believe that. Um, Importer asks for increasing BAP. The importer may ask for a certain um, aspect or uh, certain things like improving the aroma, and as a result, um, the producer uh, did something that um, lead to the exceedance. Um, even if um, uh, well, we are not able to understand everything of a certain country but um, from which um, the food is imported. Um, and we do conduct testing uh, from, on imported oil or cooking oil, and uh, we have not discovered any problem. As for the um, uh, international standards on um, the um, chemical contents, in food, uh, such standards are evolving. Now you can see that in European Union and in our country there is a limit concerning on BAP in other countries there is none. We are following the um, international practice um, and also um, we are monitoring the scientific uh, findings um, of studies on harmful food substances. And in the process, uh, we need uh, some countries may be going um, more ahead, and some may not be as quick uh, in responding to such uh, responses. And um, there is a process of harmonization. It doesn't mean that if a country is a bit slower in certain 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 standards, um, the food over there is not safe. Concerning codex I, um, and standards, I think Dr. Ho will be in a better position to answer the question. With regard to food safety, our food safety standard, we, we base our food safety standard on the codex. And that um, is also recognized by the WTO. And if um, the standard of the codex is um, met, then food can be exported to everywhere in the world. As for BAP, there is no limit set by the codex. So in setting our standard, apart from making reference to the mainland standard and the EU standard, we also uh, make reference to the JECFA um, uh, limit. Um, at present, there is no international standard. There are different reasons contributing to that. People may have different views in terms of risk. 
and people、um, may have different views concerning the reduction of BAP in the、uh, production process. Even if、uh, there is no standard, there are also there are still safety、uh, guidelines, and we can still enforce the law. The next, Mr. Tommy Chang, followed by Christopher Chong. Tommy, I have to declare、uh, interest because I have a company which is recycling、um, waste edible oil. Uh, I hope short questions for short answers. I will look into the future. In your paper, para twenty one, I have yet to see whether you want to incorporate BAP as a regular monitoring target, or you are going to legislate, like dealing with malachite green and. Um, you one is not allowed to、uh, exceed the standard, and if you exceed that, you breach the law and you'll be prosecuted. Or you just、uh, check if it exceeds the standard, you just dispose of the product. The secretary. In the in the national community, there is no standard. Of why nobody can tell you the reason. Many、uh, countries have to look at the development of the matter. And when you do a risk assessment, you need to make certain assumptions.、Uh, my time is very limited. <clears throat> my question is very simple. It's a simple question. Concerning BAP, do you intend to legislate just like you control malachite green? If your answer is no, we have many、uh, experts here. We'll consult the expert panel first. I have not conducted any study. Our country has passed a law to deal with gutter oil, and if you produce gutter oil,、uh, you'll be punished with death penalty. And we went to the mainland, and we saw people sent to jail because of producing gutter oil. Now our country has、um, such a law. Other countries don't have such a law. Uh, you know the reasons. I want to ask、uh, doctor, the doctor. Now you say that BAP、uh, is present in the natural environment. It is not.、Uh, it, it may not be the reason of、um, food production process. I thank、uh, Mr. Chen for the question. BAP is a contaminant in the environment. It can be present in the air, in soil. And in the sediment,、uh, submarine sediment, and plants in its growing process may uh, have uh, got、uh, BAP. In processing of food such as edible oil, BAP can also be produced. Now, after cooking with、uh, with high temperature. Oil can also produce BAP. In the production of edible oil, there are ways to reduce the content of BAP. It really depends on the process、uh, processing procedure.、Uh, is the、um, CFS consider other testing methods not just limited to BAP? Say. If、um, any uh, oil uh, has been recycled as edible oil and then mixed with other edible oil,、um, will you be able to conduct any test to identify the、um, content of recycled oil in edible oil? It's not just a BAP or heavy metals. Or、uh, aflatoxin,、uh, medical contaminants,、uh, coloring substances,、um, antioxidants. Are there any tests? I'm not talking about that. Do you have any tests that can deal with the mixing of ordinary edible oil with、um, recycled oil? Wow. 
uh, it was reported by the media that there were ways to uh, check for gutter oil. According to our understanding with the um, mainland, so far there is no marker to confirm that a particular sample is gutter oil. So if such technology is available, will you uh, try it out and adopt it? Of course. So, well, uh, in the uh, last uh, uh, break, I was uh, very busy. I was exactly searching for that. I think such a technology is available in Europe. They wanted to check whether unused uh, waste oil has been uh, mixed uh, with their recycled oil. Uh, they want to avoid that because of possible uh, town uh, carbon emission. So I'm asking uh, for such information when uh, it arrives. I will let you know because we can check whether the oil has uh, been subject to a high temperature. I don't think uh, that technology in uh, Europe or in Germany uh, was uh, is particularly for BAP. As a German scientist, uh, we we talked on the phone, and uh, we well we uh, conversed with English. Now I am concerned as to whether we can have any test to check for uh, recycled uh, used oil in our uh, cooking oil. All right, I still have some time. I like to uh, talk about my catering industry. Recently, I did a survey of the catering industry asking them whether uh, they uh, support that uh, packages and uh, distributors uh, should apply for a license as well. I asked uh, for different catering companies, about 200 odd uh, uh, cat uh, restaurants involving 20 odd companies. Uh, the survey is still carrying on, but according to the responses, 80% of them are support of uh, introducing a licensing resume. And if BAP is to be regulated, uh, f when uh, being imported in Hong Kong for import for oil importation, they also agree. And they ask, uh, I asked them what limit would they go for. They go for the EU limit. And then uh, the survey also asked, uh, uh, will they uh, if uh, that involve additional cost, uh, will they support the legislation? They do. So, secretary. If you are considering uh, this issue, you know that the catering uh, industry is behind you, backing you up. And I will continue uh, with that uh, survey. Secretary, do you have any uh, response to Mr. Tommy Chung's very useful information? I thank Mr. Tommy Chung for his information. So you can see that BAP cannot be an indicator uh, to see uh, whether uh, the oil is gutter oil. Mr. Christopher Chong, our food is not safe enough and there are many blind spots. If we don't have uh, limits or standards, then we are very passive. We have to wait until uh, media exposure uh, causing a great uh, public concern before you will follow up. In last October, uh, there's something wrong with a Korean produced instant noodles. Uh, the uh, uh, the limit was exceeded by two uh, MCG, and then uh, there was a global record already. All our food is from the mainland. If uh, there are the limits uh, from the mainland, uh, would the uh, the standards be uh, too strict or too lenient? Still, shouldn't we be uh, just as concerned? Shouldn't we check to ensure that our limits are that to ensure that we have limits established as soon as possible, uh, we can uh, decide uh, whether we want to have our own limit or to follow that of the mainland or the EU. Now, if we wait until uh, the uh, next food incident and another special meeting, uh, this is not the right attitude. I hope the administration can check uh, whether we, uh, if uh, limits are missing for any 
uh, food substances related to safety and for used oil, recycled oil. Do you um, regulate or monitor the processing of uh, recycled oil for sale afterwards? Will uh, there be contaminants? Uh, uh, the quality is uh, rather different from uh, uh, from uh, fresh and oil, cooking oil. If you do not have limits or do not uh, monitor the quality, then this is a problem. And then uh, the this the problem of uh, labeling. Uh, you ask us not to uh, change the uh, traditional mode of operation, but it is not like when we were kids. We were asked by our uh, dad uh, to uh, take a bottle and uh, buy a bottle of oil from a grocery, from a grocer. But uh, things are different. We buy bottled oils from a large source. Can we ensure that uh, on the food label uh, there is the content of uh, various substances so that the public can uh, feel safe? Secretary. Of course, uh, we uh, followed up after uh, the media report, but that doesn't mean that we have not our own uh, surveillance program before that. Well, in November, last November, we announced uh, the findings of a targeted uh, surveillance project on used cooking oil. So we do we do monitor the quality of a uh, cooking oil available in the market. The director mentioned uh, a number of uh, limits or standards for various substances. Uh, but of course, we don't have one for BAP, and we are proposing to introduce one. I still have time, Chairman. Now, I'm not just talking about cooking oil. We have so many food items. There might be carcinogens or harmful substances. If uh, we don't have limits for these substances yet, and yet there are already limits uh, available in other countries, shouldn't we review the current situation and uh, set our own standards? Secretary, this is what we've been doing all along. We keep track of uh, new development in uh, various countries uh, when um, it is internationally agreed that a certain substance is harmful. We will follow up and legislate uh, for a certain limit. Mr. Chung, we can't. have a limit for all harmful chemicals or substances one day because uh, this is uh, uh, an evolution. Perhaps uh, a substance is not considered harmful today but considered harmful tomorrow. So let me tell you that every day on a daily basis we have a few emails uh, involving food incidents. Uh, in other parts of the world. And so this is the, the work of the CFS. Uh, what about uh, bottling, uh, canning oil? Now, uh, we no longer go to a grocer to buy bottled, uh, to buy oil. So uh, what about uh, labels of cooking oil? Mr. Chong, I agree that uh, we should review whether this mode of uh, operation should continue and whether we should uh, regulate or monitor uh, such uh, business as well. Will you consider including in labels uh, the level of harmful substances so that the public can know for sure whether uh, there have been exceedances? Uh, Dr. Ho, uh, I fail to understand uh, Mr. Chung's question. So you want people uh, to um, to state uh, in the label that 
there is no harmful substance. In fact, uh, it's not necessary because uh, in the legislation, with everything, with all the limits of harmful substances uh, in food substances. No, no, no. I think Mr. Ng is asking you say uh, to include in the label the amount of BAP in a particular sample. Well, we should. We have general requirements of labels. For instance, uh, uh, the, uh, the the nature and uh, the best before date, uh, the manufacturer, the address, the weight, so and so forth. Uh, such basic information is already required on the label. Ms. Claudia Mo. Thank you. Of course, I understand that BAP is a natural contaminant uh, that can be found in the environment. We have a few doctors here, and we all know that because of uh, pollution, uh, we uh, have a lot more autism because of uh, such uh, contaminants. Now, in Hong Kong, when we talk about gutter oil, we are so worried because its source is uh, the mainland, and food safety on the mainland is far from assuring. Well, gutter, the word gutter uh, means uh, oil collected from the drains, uh, so this is very worrying. Perhaps uh, the public, I mean the administration, is uh, worried of uh, public public panic, and. This is a perception, and so you are trying very hard to dilute the uh, seriousness of the matter. Uh, you are just telling the public that yes, uh, there is an exceedance, but it won't uh, uh, kill or harm people. Is it what you're doing, trying to uh, prevent uh, public uh, panic? So, uh, Dr. Ho, can you assure us that uh, you have already told us everything? And secondly, just like other members, we're very concerned about uh, uh, oil uh, that is bottled or canned in Hong Kong. Food is very expensive in Hong Kong. If you purchase uh, oil bottled in Hong Kong, uh, there may uh, be a food uh, problem, and you say that you will consider uh, whether. Uh, such a business uh, should be regulated, but you have to wait until uh, somebody is killed or harmed by such oil before you consider uh, legislation. Of course, the administration's attitude is uh, you can't control or legislate or, or to regulate everything whenever there is an incident. But even uh, Mr. Tommy Jung said that the catering industry welcomes such a move. Uh, they would welcome a tight, uh, tighter control by the government because uh, I'm sure you have seen a list of restaurants or uh, eating establishments alleged to be using uh, such oil and then uh, no no patrons will patronize uh, these restaurants anymore so restaurants are very worried so uh, for a bulk uh, bottling uh, will, will you consider controlling uh, this business there must be some regulation, and according to the uh, director, uh, they traced the badge all the way to Shandong, uh, a supply in Shandong, and uh, there are accusations that we are not controlling the import of oil from uh, source uh, very um, properly. Can we ban this brand from? Uh, this manufacturer, you may say that well, it's not possible. We can't ban the supply or, or importation of oil from Shandong from this manufacturer because of one incident. Can you consider uh, setting up a blacklist? Well, uh, for the first in occasion, uh, you leave, you give it a black mark, and then if there are three incidents then uh, no food can be imported from this manufacturer into Hong Kong in the future. Is it possible? Because if we can uh, tackle the source, then we are indirectly helping our catering industries. Our restaurants don't have to worry so much. The Secretary. Um, uh, Madam O, concerning your first question, I can assure you that I'm not trying to dilute the issue. 
but we need to be fair. We need to have scientific evidence. If we don't have evidence, we just say so. It's not that we don't deliberately try to dilute the issue. I'm equally concerned about cut oil. As for the second uh, suggestion, even for uh, the selling of oil on a bulk breaking basis, uh, regulation should be introduced. Uh, we'll actively consider that. But I want to point out that the problem doesn't arise from this practice. A certain batch of imported oil uh, had a problem. And this wasn't the issue of selling of oil, edible oil on a bulk breaking basis. As so for the third point, I agree with you in principle. Say, for example, a certain company has a very bad record. Um, it doesn't have a good practice. It's, it has breached the law or rules, and it has um, um, poor uh, poor record. Well, whether blacklisting is effective, I really don't know. Uh, if you stop, if you ban a certain company, then it can trade under another name. And I know that there is also uh, this uh, practice of a demerit system. Say, if an individual has repeated offenses and has a bad, very bad record, will certainly impose a heavy fine or a heavier penalty on that. The director. Now, whether there is a practice is a uh, blacklist is just um, uh, a name. In our enforcement action, if encounter if we encountered some companies uh, which has problems and, uh, and such problems are found, and then we have a mechanism to deal with that. And if they have similar products being imported in Hong Kong, we may uh, um, get hold of the, pro uh, the, the badge of consignment, the badge, and then test them before um, the badge of uh, product is uh, released in the market. And if um, the product cause any risk of public health um, problem, then we can issue a public safe, uh, food safety order, uh, even banning the importing of food into Hong Kong uh, by certain companies. Now you say you may hold. There is a chance to hold that, but it's only a possibility. And you have the power to issue a food safety order. You have the power to do so, but you may not do so. And if you ban one company, it can trade under another name. There is a way when there is a will, there is a way. But it's really a deterrent if you have this demerit system. Uh, Chairman, if I may finish. We, we did make use of the um, food safety order. Say during the Fukushima, Fukushima incident, we did issue a food safety order. The food, uh, certain f kinds of food produced in the five counties five prefectures in Japan uh, were not allowed to be imported into Hong Kong and um, also um, if we found that uh, in our regular surveillance if there are certain exigencies and uh, breaches we will put um, the company under surveillance and if they have food uh, to be imported into Hong Kong would we'll hold those uh, consignments and conduct tests and make sure that they are, the food is safe before um, it is released, the consignment is released. Ms. Mo, you don't have further things to ask? Since no one has uh, um, raised um, his or her hand, I, I will also take the, five, the seven minutes. Now we're concerned about edible oil because we eat them. <coughs> And people are very concerned, and therefore, in um, the WhatsApp, uh, you have many lists of restaurants which are alleged uh, to be using the um, gut oil. And many um, restaurants are affected, and therefore, Mr. Chung is very concerned. Now, in clarifying a question raised by Mr. Chung, you said that. Um, you are not going to adopt the same approach as you uh, dealt with Malachite Green. Um, Malachite Green was uh, included into uh, harmful substances, food, uh, harmful substances in food regulation. If uh, there is an exceedance, the operator may be sent to jail and 
uh, have to pay a fine. And the, in comparison with malachite green, um, in terms of food safety, how is BAP different? Why you um, adopt a different approach? In paragraph 21, you also uh, mentioned that um, the uh, concerning the uh, level of BAP uh, between 10 mcg per kg to less than 20 mcg per kg vis-a-vis um, -vis above um, or vis-a-vis -vis 20 mcg per kg about or above um, it seems that we've adopted a standard which is slower than that of the mainland in the mainland the uh, cap is 10 mcg per kg but in Hong Kong even if it's mcg per kg um, to less than 20 mcg per kg um, the person is not um, in breach of the law uh, correct me if I'm wrong why you adopt these two tiered approach why we've adopted a standard less than that of the mainland the second question is also asked on behalf of Mr. Chang's constituents in the past we did have uh, certain charters we call it we call something a charter say for example in a charter we claim that we use um, new oil we don't use recycled oil that can be a charter between the um, uh, Mr. Chung's constituents and uh, the administration it's just something like a Q mark if you sign the charter you put a mark on your main door um, on the main door of your restaurant and then it will be taken account by the patrons in fact um, this issue has been discussed um, um, by this panel we need to ensure safety from stable from stable to table and that involves a lot of efforts to keep that and there are also many um, milestones can you follow the practice in the United States? They allow all people to participate in surveillance. They have a user-friendly approach. Now, one day I went to a radio program. Someone working in Kuntong called, made a call, and um, he or she saw um, an oil tanker, edible oil tanker, was unloading uh, oil into um, smaller barrels and the situation was very unhygienic now will you consider having a hotline to allow people who are concerned about food safety to call you up and help you to enforce the law and in this monitoring process of from stable to table um, can you have a so-called uh, recognition arrangement or authorization arrangement suggested by Mr. Tommy Chung also there are certain reputable um, author organizations can um, be uh, recognized by Hong Kong and if say there is a sort of certificate a safety certificate issued by now, these reputable organizations and then our uh, consumers uh, can uh, patronize these uh, shops or restaurants um, without any concerns well I think uh, the secretary I think there are two uh, technical questions which will be addressed by the uh, expert of the uh, CFS the third question concerning cooperation with the food business I really welcome that and I really welcome that uh, charter a sort of charter or other arrangements if the representative or representatives of the constituency we um, are able to come up with any suggestions we're happy to consider them as for the hotline 
to enable members of the public to be involved in the monitoring. In fact, the FEHD has a hotline, and the administration also has a hotline for the whole SARG. This is operated by the efficiency unit. It's not that they just listen to your call and then um, press a button on the switchboard. Um, information information can be given to this center, and then the center can um, take action, or the, and then or the issue can be referred to the department's consent. As for w whether certain organizations can help us with the recognition process. In fact, in Hong Kong, there are certain uh, certification certification bodies, and if they do have the professionally uh, recognized, and these bodies do have professionally recognized uh, statuses, and does the administration uh, need to provide certification? I, I'm, I have an open attitude towards that. With regard to the importation of edible oil and other uh, foods, uh, can there be a certain kind of certification mechanism for the um, certification bodies or testing bodies? Dr. Oh, uh, uh, the director. Well, we're happy to talk to uh, the trade concerning the certification or recognition system. We're happy to talk to the trade, and we're happy to listen to suggestions or give suggestions to them. I. I hope that the um, trade will establish certain good practices. Say, for example, when you import oil, when you buy oil from a certain supplier, you need to check the certifications. And you may require your supplier to provide you with test reports on a regular basis. I think these specific guidelines can be worked out with the trade. We treasure our communication with the trade. Therefore, once we've got the testing results, we immediately share the outcome with the uh, food trade. With regard to voluntary schemes of the trade, we're able to provide, we're willing to provide professional advice. But the CFS is a law enforcement body. If we come across any exceedance, we come across any breaches, we need to take action. Um, our participation can, in, um, the, uh, in drawing up of the charter or standards um, cannot replace the need for law enforcement. If we need to put in a law uh, that a certain level should not be exceeded, and once it is exceeded, you have a criminal liability. If we are to do so, it will be time-consuming. It will take a lot of time because it is an amendment of the law, and we need to have scientific evidence to back up such um, an arrangement. And in the process, we need to talk to experts. And we also need to consider the consumption habits of the people of Hong Kong in order um, to um, put it in the law, we need to have the um, uh, we need to have adequate scientific evidence, and we need to be backed by adequate facts. At present, there are adic adequate provisions in the law to um, allow us to take enforcement action. I think. Um, there may be a difference uh, concerning BAP. I think uh, there is just a difference in practice. Now, if um, the level is more than 20 mgc per kg, then uh, it is more risky, and then we will take enforcement action under 54, Section 54. We can even issue orders uh, prohibiting the import of such uh, products. But if it is between 10 to 20, will ask the distributor to recall such products. If they refuse, then under fifth Section 54, we may prosecute. Uh, under Section 52, we may prosecute uh, the distributor 
for uh, selling uh, food product which is um, not of the nature, not of substance, not of quality demanded by the purchaser. And we um, really need to conduct further consultations if we are to set limits. So according to your reply, Malachite Green is different because Malachite Green has the, uh, has a consensus in the international community, but there is none for PAP. Well, I didn't mention Malachi Green, well, but I, I asked you about it. Several years ago, we dealt with Malachi Green, and at that time, the administration's Bivley moved an amendment to the law and lists Malachi Green um, uh, as an item under harmful substances in food regulation. But now, you're telling us that you have no intention to do the same. So my question is very focused. Is there any difference between Malachi Green and BAP? Uh, Dr. Ho. Uh, yes, let me supplement. Malachi Green uh, is different from BAP, although both are harmful substances. But uh, malachite green uh, is added uh, deliberately into food, and uh, it is totally um, it is zero tolerance under our law. It cannot be found in food at all uh, because uh, it will only be there by deliberate addition, and it is not allowed. But for BAP, we face. Uh, difficult situation. What is an internationally acceptable standard? Because if the limit is set uh, not very properly, then uh, the trade can uh, complain to the WHO. All right, I get it. Uh, when can we have an answer from you as to uh, whether you will legislate? You told us that you will meet with the expert committee on food safety in January, and then you will try our two-tier system. And what next? Do you have a timetable? Secretary, do you have any plans in mind? Uh, if the expert committee agrees to our proposal, we will uh, try out this. So you have no intention to adopt the same approach as you did for Malachite Green. Yes, we gave a clear explanation. All right, I got it. First round, uh, Mr. Chen Chi Chun, before we go into the second round. Mr. Chen. Thank you, Chairman. Paragraph 7 of the administration's paper is uh, from the 1st of uh, from January 2011 to October 2012, 310 Plus, cooking oil samples were tested, and they were all found to be satisfactory. The administration is trying to uh, assure us by giving us statistics. Uh, all our tests are satisfactory, and uh, the case exposed by the media might just be isolated incidents. So uh, you uh, want to whitewash the whole matter, but this is a greater cause of concern. How come the uh, media uh, could find out a problematic case, and yet, according to your 300 samples, they were all okay. Of course, you can review your your frequency and uh, things and like that. But are you going to review your uh, mode of operation in taking samples? Is it just something uh, routine, or is it perhaps uh, the operators or the food traders uh, could circumvent uh, your? Enforcement. So, how do you take samples uh, from uh, the uh, bottle just on the table, or in the walk, or in their storeroom, or in a hidden <laughs> compartment in their storeroom? Will you carry out undercover operations? And the public have this impression that the media, um, all knowing, and yet the administration is too slow and too. Too passive to act. Uh, in the past uh, public uh, holidays, I was told uh, by the public that uh, the uh, catering 
the caterers, uh, takeaway caterers, operating in industrial buildings and food canteens, uh, took out advertisements in newspapers for party organizers. So, uh, for instance, will you uh, raise your level of award so that people will not just uh, complain to the media and not to the government, so as uh, not to give the public the impression that the media are more knowledgeable than the administration secretary. As I said, we welcome the public to uh, help us to monitor these establishments. You cannot just rely on the government. We can't be uh, omnipotent and uh, monitor all these establishments. So we will publicize later to enhance our publicity to uh, ask the public to help, uh, give us information to follow up. The government would not uh, use a prize or award uh, to encourage the public. I don't think Mr. Chen uh, would mind if you uh, use some of his time uh, for this publicity. Do you have a hot time? Well, the FHD has got a hotline. Director, please. Our hotline is 2868 and uh, 40. Okay. 2868 uh, 000. Uh, this is our 24 hour hotline. Of course, uh, 1283 is the government's uh, general hotline, uh, which offers one stop service. You call 1283 and all complaints will be processed. Mr. Chen's question is not answered. Dr. Lee will explain to you our sampling procedures. Dr. Lee, thank you. Uh, what are our sampling procedures? In uh, between January 2011 and October 2012, uh, we took 310 cooking oil samples uh, for various tests, and most of the samples were taken in uh, food establishments. First, uh, we divide the whole territory into different districts. We take samples from all districts and uh, the respective staff responsible th for that district uh, will um, set up a list of high-end, low-end and uh, medium-end uh, uh, food establishments. Uh, for, uh, for establishments that are uh, suspected to uh, be more risky, and that is if they have a high chance of using problematic cooking oil, we would take more samples from these establishments. And uh, for the targeted um, surveillance program, uh, we took 68 samples of used cooking oil, and uh, the samples were taken from uh, the frying pans or the wok of uh, these establishments. Uh, we have internal guidelines for our staff uh, on how to carry out uh, sampling exercises. And according to Mr. Chen, uh, it's only the media who's, uh, who are able to recover, to uncover such incidents and not the government. This is not true. Every year, uh, every month, we announce the uh, findings of our surveillance programs uh, of the previous month, and we also carry out seasonal food surveillance. And when findings are available, we also announce to the public our findings. Uh, from time to time, there are food samples that have exceeded our statutory limits, and we do announce the results every time. And of course, it is for the media to decide uh, what uh, the extent of coverage should be given to our releases. But even for our routine food surveillance, we uh, re we announce on a regular basis uh, the uh, exceedances and also uh, the countries, uh, the food establishments involved. Some members may refer to our monthly announcements. Thank you. Mr. Chen, the media can really consider uh, giving a cash prize. And uh, if uh, you have a cash prize, then even uh, the staff of uh, these establishments might report to you because uh, the media are offering the same. So you don't have uh, to say no uh, flatly now.
So, Secretary, uh, please note Mr. Chen's remarks. If you have guidelines for your frontline staff uh, to in carrying out um, testing or uh, taking of samples, perhaps you can share the guidelines with us to uh, vindicate uh, the administration. So uh, the um, public won't have the impression that you're always uh, the last to know and the last to act because we don't know how you take the samples and the tests involved and the methods involved. Please consider doing so. Mr. James Toe, I'd like to ask some short questions and I hope and I expect short answers from the administration. Uh, the media have exposed uh, this food incident uh, involving the composition of cooking oil. I assume that the administration has read uh, the media reports and also the alleged contents of uh, the cooking oil. Now, if these samples were, t were tested by the government, uh, would uh, would it consider that uh, these were violations and uh, prosecution would be taken? Secretary. Uh, Chairman, I will ask uh, this uh, short question first. Uh, my apologies. Uh, director. If in our routine food surveillance, we uh, discover harmful substances such as BAP in our samples. The usual way to deal with it is if uh, the public risk is low, then at the uh, end of the month when we have a regular um, announcement, we will include that in the information. If uh, there is a public health hazard, we will choose uh, to announce at once. For instance, a few days ago, uh, there was a sample of a fermented bean curd, and then um, bacteria was found, and announcement was made at once. And it also depends on evidence collected uh, on sport. Where necessary, we will consult the DFJ. If uh, there is violation of our relevant legislation, depending on the severity, now if it is not too serious, we can go for issuing a warning letter to the uh, food establishment or the distributor. If uh, there is sufficient evidence and if uh, the D of J uh, supports us, we can prosecute the relevant uh, establishment. All right, uh, a few hundred uh, samples are taken every year, and then you uh, carry out seasonal food surveillance, and also uh, you you you, you uh, test the uh, hairy crabs as well. Now, let me tell you that now the uh, seasonal concern, the the concern now, is cooking oil. After uh, that media exposure, have you? Gone to now after that media exposure. Have you gone to different sources? Uh, have you a uh, target at the uh, restaurants uh, in the uh, supply chain and test the samples? Have you done so? And if so, how many samples have you taken? Well, we adopted a multi-pronged approach in our investigation. We follow up on cases. Um, uncovered by the media. According uh, to the media, 13 restaurants uh, were alleged to uh, have purchased uh, the oil. So uh, we went to these restaurants on that morning. And then we have our own investigations. If uh, in, in these companies and uh, eating establishments, we asked for the uh, transaction records. Uh, to look at the supplier and also uh, the uh, retail outlet. So we do uh, deal where we have uh, checked uh, both uh, levels. Hi. And the um, alleged uh, restaurants 
um, published in the internet. Um, we also follow them up. How many restaurants or how many companies? Mm, a, a restaurant may be say have some uh, have uh, several branches. So how many units altogether? Now we um, from the 18 to the 27th. Uh, we've, or rather, on the 18th, 27th, we issued a press release. Um, I asked Dr. Lee to report to you. We've taken 90 samples, including uh, samples from importers, the distributors, and also the restaurants um, involved, and also the uh, 13 restaurants mentioned in the media, and also uh, those uh, in the uh, Internet. Have you got the results of all the 90 samples? They have finished uh, testing 62 samples. Is there any um, situation as described by the media? In our two news releases, um, um, the one on the 18th December, 39 samples, um, results were announced, uh, two um, t taken from Wing Hing in Kwai Chung exceeded the EU standard of 2 MCG, but less than 10 MCG, uh, the standard of our country. And then um, in the, and then also a, uh, two samples uh, from the importer 17 and 12. When the FEHD um, staff uh, take samples, this is their um, duty. Say if a manager of the company uh, and other staff members collude to obstruct the enforcement of the law, or if they collude to uh, use soil uh, in breach of certain standard is a criminal offense. I hope that you will not do it, uh, do the prosecution on your, on your own, uh, but you refer the case to the police because it is a criminal offense. And if uh, you can take statement, if the police can statement, then uh, you will have a, a much bigger discovery. If food safety is really um, important to you, and if you can hand over the cases to the police, then um, it will have a stronger deterrent effect and a fine. It, will, it won't just be a fine of a few thousand dollars, but um, it will be imprisonment. Um, the next round uh, now, um, Mr. Wong Kwok Hing will have his uh, second round, and he has moved a motion and I've approved uh, the moving of this motion because the motion is relevant to the um, agenda item today. Ms. Omi Chow, I don't know whether I am in the second uh, round. Uh, not yet. Um, I've not seen your name, but you may now uh, be included. Mr. Wong, uh, do you allow Mr. Wong, Mr. Tom Michel to ask his questions first? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I prefer to um, introduce my motion first. I hope that my uh, uh, our members will support my motion. It's very simple, but it can reflect the intention of this council. We hope the administration will uh, change its mind and be committed to change the law to limit the presence of BAP in edible oil. We shouldn't allow the administration to adopt a double talk. My motion is very simple. We urge the administration to amend the law as soon as possible to uh, limit the um, contents of BAP, which is a carcinogenic substance in food, uh, in order to protect the um, health of our citizens. I want to ask a follow-up question. In my first round, 
I asked the administration why it could be so lenient. The oil that was found to be problematic was allowed to be shipped back to the mainland. On the 27th of December, according to the news release of the administration, that batch of oil, um, a total of 80 barrels, were imported, and 45 barrels were sold. Uh, they might have been all consumed because they couldn't be uh, recalled. Um, altogether, uh, um, uh, um, 19 barrels were seized by the administration, or 16 barrels were marked and sealed, and 19 barrels were recalled. Okay, there are 35 barrels, and they were shipped back to the mainland. According to the administration, the ASQ, AQSIQ attach importance to the problem. It's just a mere sentence, and you allow them to take 35 barrels back into the mainland. And I find that unreasonable. And I find it irresponsible. If you want to, uh, if the administration wants to take our prosecution, Mr. Chairman, your barrister, you know that is evidence. This is evidence. Without any trial, without going through any legal procedures, you just release the 35 barrels. The question is very clear. You have 15 seconds only. Uh, if the CPG says that it's very concerned, and then you just hand back the 35 barrels, how can we follow that up, uh, the Secretary? Do you trust the AS AQSIQ? And that will be good enough. The Director, I've already answered the question. With regard to the return of problematic food substances, and ha having informed the um, relevant authorities in the mainland, and uh, then handling them back is a normal practice. We've taken samples from the uh, 35 barrels of oil, and if we are to take our prosecution, we can rely on those samples. I hope the SARG will follow the matter up with the mainland authorities and tell us how they deal with the 35 barrels. We need the answer. We can't allow them to muddle through. They will take them back. After they've taken them back, they will mix the oil, and then it will harm the people in the mainland. You've heard it, all right? Uh, Mr. Tommy Chow. In fact, I'm happy with the work of the CFS. They've really done a good job in most circumstances. As for this incident, um, some photos were published, and it seems that they have um, done something um, negligently. But in fact, there is no neg negligence. I look into the matter, and there is no risk. Um, uh, you mentioned WhatsApp. In fact, um, my when I uh, handed WhatsApps, I sent to Canada, to United States, and friends in Hong Kong also asked me about the matter. In fact, these are all rumors. They, these are all rumors. In fact, those residents, those restaurants, have not taken oil from the importer. As for prosecution. I don't mind, but I brought media to a restaurant. I didn't tell them in advance. We we asked for the um, invoices. Well, in, in fact, they have not asked for cheaper oil because the price difference is just one dollar or two. So if there is any mixing, the restaurants doesn't know. The restaurants don't know. The purchasing purchasing manager, the manager doesn't know, because it's only a small price difference. 
Now for chickens, for vegetables, um, they are tested before release. Concerning cooking oil, with regard to the production and transportation and distribution of cooking oil, will you try to start a licensing uh, system so you can take action, you can conduct tests? I think you should start now. I don't know whether it's too busy, whether you're too busy. Suppose somebody imports a large barrel of oil and then bottle them and can them um, into smaller containers, and then it's the same as you import tons of oil and sell them uh, to the um, restaurants. Well, you you really can't add oil, uh, add water to oil. If say a hundred ton become a hundred tons become a hundred twenty tons, the um, extra volume of oil must come from somewhere in Hong Kong, and that will that comes from recycling. I think, in fact, the CFS can follow the matter up. This will try to block any. Um, uh, ill intention of mixing oil in Hong Kong. The secretary. Now concerning the um, whether we should uh, conduct tests on the imported oil, uh, we have no position yet. But I'll look into that as of changing the law. I know that there is a motion, and after the motion, we will study how we can follow the matter up. But we've already explained to you. The difference between Malacca Green and BAP, and whether it is appropriate to change the law now is still a question. And the third thing is we are considering whether we withdraw the exemption uh, for those who are just uh, repackaging oil. Um, uh, Bulkly uh, imported oil into uh, smaller content, uh, smaller containers, and uh, Mr. Chang uh, also suggested that we should look into um, ways to control the mixing, uh, to inspect the mixing of oil, and also he suggested certain methods. Uh, we'll look into that. Now uh, concerning mixing of oil, the secretary has already said that mixing oil, make, mixing edible oil, has to obtain license. Concerning oil edible oil. Whether one is an importer or a distributor, a secretary, will you please clarify this? Uh, do they need a license? Importation uh, doesn't require a license, but if one mixes the imported oil, then it is a processing procedure and a license to be obtained. And that is exactly the point. I know that. I know that. Now he is selling edible oil. Well, I don't care for what purpose he import the edible oil. He has to get a license, and if he has got the license, then you can your health inspectors can go there and take samples and conduct a test, and you can look at their records. You don't need to wait when problems occur. What's the problem of having a license? Before he answers the question, I would like to get your approval to extend the minute the, the meeting by five minutes to deal with, at least to extend, deal with Mr. Wong's question uh, motion. I understand Mrs. Que I understand Mr. Chung's question. I will consider his suggestion. The principle is to consider the risk. Uh, we don't impose such a requirement on each kind of food. And um, we we need to do it according to a risk assessment basis. As for Mr. Chung's uh, other question, mix uh, he knows that mixing oil is a uh, processing procedure and requires uh, a license. But as for prevention of uh, people, as for preventing people mixing oil. With recycled oil, we have to find ways to deal with that. Well, um, members who want to speak have already spoken.
We've already asked the questions. The only uh, thing remaining on the table is a motion moved by Mr. Wong Kok Hing. A show of hands, uh, please. Uh, uh, you have the motion, right? And those in favour, please raise their hands. Uh, there's no objection. All right, the uh, motion is carried. Uh, Secretary, please uh, relay our decision to the uh, relevant authorities. All right. Any other questions? No. Uh, the meeting uh, for the 8th of January will be extended to 6 o'clock uh, because uh, 31 related uh, hawkers and traders will come here to express their views. Thank you, Secretary.